Got because it. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All Thank right. Um, our next speaker is Mr. Mike Padilla. Mr. Padilla, again, uh, you have three minutes. We'd love to hear from you. Great. Hi, I'm Mike Padilla. Uh, my daughter and son compete on the cross country, track, and swimming teams. And over the past 12 months, I've been quite honestly struggling with the administration to address Title IX issues. Um, so as you may be aware, Pennsylvania schools are required to report their Title IX data November 1st for the prior school year. <laughs> Last year, um, we were working with the AD, and um, I came back and I noticed on, in May that it hasn't been updated. So this is November to May. It took me over 10 emails to get the data updated in August. So we're looking nine months later. Um, and if that's not bad enough, when you look at the data, it's quite appalling. Um, so I think no one's keeping an eye on this whatsoever. The data is completely in disarray, and no one's looking at kind of what is equality when it comes to female and male participation. So I'm just going to read some stats, because I actually did look at the data. I have a whole Tableau report. I'll send everyone here a link. I have a whole website set up that now it's time to kind of unveil look under the covers here. Um, Amount listed for facilities for 21-22, that's the year when there's a new football field built, new track and field, zero dollars. Um, amount listed for facilities last year, only for golf for some reason, 9,986. Amount listed under other this year, kind of a mysterious black box, which wasn't in prior reports, $109,000, 40% of all non-coaching expenses under other. Um, booster funds for boys baseball, golf, cross country, track, swimming, tennis, wrestling, zero dollars. Somehow those teams aren't using any booster funds. Um, percentage difference in funding for boys versus girls for last school year. Baseball, softball, 27% more on boys and girls. Soccer, 30% more boys and girls. Basketball, 33% more boys and girls. Shortage of girls' positions, proportional to boys to girls' student population, 59 slots. So the boys are much more represented playing sports than the girls are. Examples of differential treatment. This is just a small set of anecdotes here. Um, PAC championship celebration. Boys won baseball, congrats. Championship rings for the team and a ring ceremony. Girls cross country won PACs. First time, I think, in the history of the program. They got a t-shirt. Facility recognition. And you don't notice until like my daughter started pointing these things out, right? Um, number of men permanently recognized in Washington Field, nine men. Number of women, zero. They play field hockey, they run track, they do all those other things there, right? Number of, of Phoenixville athletic facilities named after men, three. Named after women, zero. Um, dress code, permission required for boys to go shirtless on hot summer days, no permission required. Women to wear sports bras must initially denied, and then must meet with the principal. And the last thing, so not only is like the inequality, obviously the core Mr. issue Padilla, here. time is up. Okay, what, one last bullet. Um, just to remind everyone, right? Recently, amount recently embezzled by, from PSAD, $94,316. So there's a black box here. People aren't tracking what's being spent, and no one's keeping an eye on how are we gonna close the gap. And it's not about removing the opportunities from the boys. That might be a good standard to set. Raise the bar for the girls as well. So I'm asking for accountability and a plan forward um, with some deadlines and progress that's tangible. All right, thank you, Mr. Padilla. Thank you. All right, and our final speaker this evening, uh, looks like Zoe 